But at night, I can remember after the beautiful, glorious chaos of each day, um, <laughs> I've often described our family, especially at meal times, as sort of being this ant hill of activity, right? And everybody, somebody's folding the towels, someone's setting the table, someone's pouring the, or the orange juice, someone's scrambling the eggs, and and then we would hush and we would eat, right? Um, it was a beautiful area of activity, and yet it was exhausting as the mom and the dad because I didn't have their energy. <laughs> and um, at night, very often at night, I would go in and just say a prayer after they were asleep and just marvel at how still they were. <laughs> I know. I Welcome to the show called Let's Talk Homeschool, brought to you by Apologia Educational Ministries. This is the show where we talk about everything homeschooling, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. We want to affirm and encourage you in the decision to homeschool, challenge and inspire you to take it to new heights, and celebrate everything you get to experience along the way in this adventure of a lifetime. Today's show is titled, How Many Times? With the phrase, be still. Okay, Rachel, let's talk homeschool. Oh, I love this one. I think I love, well, I love all of them, but this one, every time we do one of these podcasts on one of these, I just step back and when all the kids were here and running around and there was this general glorious chaos in our house. And yeah, be still was something we said a lot yeah. around here. Yeah. So how many times have you said this to your kids? This is a series based on Rachel's book, How Many Times Do I Have to Tell You? Subtitled, What God Wants Us to Hear When We Talk to Our Kids. And so yeah. we've been, there's 68 chapters in the book, and we've been looking at, uh, we're looking at 11 of the mm -hmm. chapters, a 10 plus a bonus, yep. had an intro and a conclusion, and today we're looking at the chapter titled, Be Still. When you sit look still. at your kids, please sit still, be still. Yeah. Because people are moving around. Yeah, people are moving around a lot. And the kids were always very active. And I always, it was important to me, for me, for my sanity, I think, to get up before the kids started moving. And not that that's easy, but once they were up, they they were just constantly in motion. And I needed a little bit of peace before the chaos hit. It right. just helped my mind be a little bit more peaceful. Well, it makes me think of uh, as parents, when you finally get all the kids down and settled in yeah. bed, and as a parent, you the doors are closed, you walk into the bedroom with each other perhaps, and it's just like, okay, I, th I think everybody's still yeah, for right now. I think they're settled. What do we need to do? What do we need to talk about? <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and, I'll, and I'll say too, I think one of the things that we learned, I'd I don't think I knew this initially. Initially, I wanted them to be still all the time. Every time, I wanted them to be still. And I'm just going to say that some of those times were unrealistic. And so I wanted them to be still when I read to them. I wanted them to be still when I was doing math with them. I wanted them to be still because it made me feel good, and it made me, it was a control thing. It made me feel like everything was good because they were still. And I think one of the things that's really powerful as a parent to exercise that discernment that comes through the Holy Spirit and realize that they really don't need to be still all the time. But there are some very clear times when it is valuable for them to learn to be still and to pick those out and help them develop skills to help themselves be still. Now, that kind of sounds um, theoretical. Well, and Right, but it's both... Uh, teaching them that there are appropriate times that right. you need to be still. Uh, and we're not going to make that be all the time. Right. And then when those moments come, here's some skills that will teach you and help you on how to be still. Right. And so for us, one, the primary time that we boiled down, because for a while, I really did want them to be still. You know, crisscross applesauce, mom is reading you a book. And we were all miserable, right? Because little kids are incapable of doing that. And that doesn't make them bad. And I'm going to say it doesn't make them disobedient. It makes them little kids. And they've got all these wiggles in them. And what I learned was when I insisted, especially when I was reading to them or even doing math with them, when I insisted on them being still, they could not take in what I was trying to deliver, whether it was a storyline 
or a math skill or a phonics lesson. They couldn't take it in because they they were squirmy and they all raised. their energy was being used towards being still. Right, and even all their cognitive was right. tied up in trying to think, be still, be still, be still, be still. I could I could sometimes see that on Charles's face, be still, be still, be still. And so it could everything that I was trying to put in was just bouncing off. And so I really found that it was best to determine when it's really important for him to be still. So you and I determined that we were going to start. Because I do think being still is a skill that kids do need to learn. And I would, I will say this. I think this is a lost skill. I think a lot of parents are just throwing their hands up in surrender and just saying, well, never mind. And I don't think that's good. We decided that there were two times that we were going to focus on and teach the kids to be still. One was at church. And so... We were the old-fashioned family that believed in the value and the power of our kids sitting with us through service and teaching them this was a time to be still and, and intentionally giving them things that they could do to move, right? Quietly, so they could right. take in the sermon or the hymns and everything. But we, want, we felt like it was really valuable to sit as a family for our kids to be trained in the hymns, to hear the sermon, we felt like that was valuable for them. And so we really focused on that first. And there's a variety of different things that we did to help their little hands be able to move and help them listen well to the sermon. Uh, little things, maybe we'll talk about that another time. But we really focused on that to begin with. And then the second place that we insisted on the kids practicing um, being still was at mealtimes. We really felt like the skill of learning to sit together as a family, not with everybody running around, not with... People um, coming and going. Right, people leaving just when they're done. Um, but it was all, we're coming together, we're waiting till everyone's here to begin actually eating, and then you have to ask to be excused to be excused, and it's all simultaneously, except rare condition, uh, situations when there was an extenuating circumstance and a longer conversation or whatever. But by and large... We all came together, we all left together, and even if you were finished, you learned what it looked like to sit there, respectfully engage in conversation, be quiet, whatever. And then we built out from there, right. but we really felt like that was a really important thing to do. But even in reading time, right, and at the beginning of reading time, we so we, in our homeschool, the core backbone of everything that we did was family reading time and reading really good literature and books for history, for science, for English, all of these really great books that we would read. And at first, I really thought everyone needed to sit completely still. Um, and yet over time, I realized that there was value in their movement. Now, it's really easy at this point in this conversation to say, well, doesn't that contradict the whole idea of being still? And I don't think it does because I think what we're what I'm trying to communicate is we were very intentional about the times that we chose that we really believed were important to be still. And we were equally as intentional about what was permissible, what they could do when they weren't being perfectly still. And we were trying to extract the value and the benefits and actually um, talk about the discipline of controlling yourself and all of that in the interim. Right. But at night, I can remember after the beautiful, glorious chaos of each day, um, <laughs> I've often described our family, especially at meal times, as sort of being this anthill of activity, right? Everybody, somebody's folding the towels, someone's setting the table, someone's pouring the, or the orange juice, someone's scrambling the eggs, and, and then we would hush and we would eat, right? Um, it was a beautiful area of activity and yet it was exhausting as the mom and the dad because I didn't have their energy <laughs> and um, at night very often at night I would go in and just say a prayer after they were asleep and just marvel at how still they were. I know I remember those moments yeah it's just like, and how beautiful it was how how was this possible they're all asleep right now it's quiet. We're awake. We're wrapping up the day. We're tired. Yeah. And uh, yeah, those were sweet moments. Uh, and as a parent, knowing it's, it's all going to start again tomorrow, you know, there's no time off. 
uh, as a parent, it's 24-7, 365. Yep. yep. Uh, and, uh, you know, when we were apart as parents, for instance, if you, when you went away, I truly appreciated all that, you know, a mom does. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it was great to not take you for granted by having to do it all yeah. for every once in a while. Uh, but at the same time, loved being with my kids right. and loved all the memories we were making, all the lessons that was happening, all the bonding that happens by doing life together. But when they were still, those were precious moments. They really were. And so to extrapolate that into what does it mean in this book, I can remember times when what I needed my kids to do was be still and read their their book that they were supposed to be reading or be still and do their math problems or be still and let somebody else take a turn maybe during a game because that's another time kids being still and not anxious for a brother or sister to move their thing on the board. And I could see that so often I don't, they didn't want to do what I wanted them to do. They didn't want to do their math facts page, right? They didn't want to read their assignment. They wanted to do something else. And so they would get busy doing something else. And one of the really tricky things that a couple of the kids tried once or twice is, I was folding the towels. You know, I'm not doing my <laughs> math facts. I'm folding the towels. Or I'm not doing my my um, my reading in my book because I'm helping my little sister. And it would be like, I need you to do, right? I need you to do what I've asked you to do. And so, again, the extrapolation is so often I'm not doing what I know God wants me to do. And I've allowed myself to be distracted. I've allowed myself to get caught up in busy. And God is like, "Mm, Rachel, I really want you to be still. I really want you to stop doing this and stop chasing after that and stop turning that on or looking at that. And I just want you to be still. And it again, all of these, all 68 chapters in here, they just bounce back in your face because there's, there's this double standard that I want my kids to do this, and yet I'm not doing this. Right. I'm chasing around after all of the things in the world. I'm chasing around. I'm letting myself be distracted and I'm, I'm busying myself. We've, this isn't, you know, unique to our conversation, but busyness has become a badge of success in the United States that you're booked for the moment. You're your feet hit the floor until you fall into bed at night. I love that song. Um, just breathe. I don't remember who sings it, But it's this song, and even the pace of the song is just busy, 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 going fast as I can. And yes, I mean, that's what someone should do. And we're drinking our coffee just to make it through, right? And he's like, yeah, no, just breathe. Just breathe. And giving yourself permission to the practice, and I'm going to say the discipline of being still. Sometimes we say it's discipline, like, to work through our to-do list, to be disciplined right. oh, no, that's a good point. to work through, you know, to stay on task. And I'm going to, I'm going to suggest that there's a discipline to just practice being. Yeah. Being still. Just being you know, still. Uh, and in a sense, if you're one to uh, have a to-do list or look at your calendar and those kind of dictate what, um, what you need to do next mm-hmm. uh, as you work through your, you know, your action items, uh, do you build in time to just be still, to breathe, yeah. to exhale, yeah. to have a quiet moment uh, with God? Uh, and that's one possible way to handle this and work through it is to actually build that into your schedule, mm-hmm. uh, to t- you know, an hour break, mm-hmm. to go for a walk, to do some reading, to mm-hmm. have some quiet time, to pray. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is discipline. It takes actual work sometimes to not work to mm-hmm. be still and know that he is God because I think one of the other things that uh, happens here is as humans we forget that we have limitations we are not God we can't be everywhere yeah. all the time mm-hmm. uh, and we the can't sa- do it all the Sabbath was made for us right so that we can work within our limitations yeah. and Leave it to God. I mean, the yeah. this Psalm, Psalm 4610, that yeah. says, Be still and know that I am God. Part of what is being communicated there is, you don't have to win this battle. Mm. Be still and watch me. Right. Know that I'm God. I'll win this battle for you. Yes, right. there's things for you to do, but there's times for you just to be still and watch me do some fighting here for you. 
that's so, uh, and, that's so and good. do the work for you. And so, yeah. uh, so often we think, no, I, I can't take a break. I got to get more right. of the stuff done. I'm behind. Yeah. Sometimes when you're behind, the best thing is to do is to stop. I totally Step agree. Away, that is so ref- hard. Refresh yourself. Yeah. Uh, and know that He is God. Mm-hmm. That He's going to do some battle for you. He's going to do make up some lost time for you. He'll right. redeem the time. And I've found so many times that I'm actually more productive if I stop for a little bit and come, and come back, back to, to it fresh. Well, I, it, there's so many good things that you just said because I'm reminded of when, and tragically this has only been in the last few years, when I was, re- I'll say, really introduced to, maybe reintroduced, to the idea of practicing a Sabbath, like really stepping away from everything and practicing a Sabbath. And I remember when I was first introduced to this idea, and I was like, wow, you must have a pretty cool life that you can get everything done. <laughs> the only way, I mean, to practice the Sabbath is to get everything done, right? To and, be so efficient that you can actually stop and take a break. Oh, my goodness. And this person, I guess, anticipated that within audience members. And he said, this isn't because you get it all done. That I mean, it's not if then. If you get everything done, then you practice a Sabbath. Because that's not what this is. It's you practice the Sabbath because you're human and because it's a gift to you from God. It's not meant as a a means of torture. Right. It's not like, ha, 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 you didn't get everything done. It's this is your humanity. You're limited. This is you letting it go re-acknowledging your dependence on me, re-acknowledging, like you're saying, your human limitations, and trusting that everything that needs to get done is going to get done. Right. And uh, to me, one of the most valuable things, and there's so many, I should write these down, one of the most valuable things for me for Sabbath is a redoing of my to-do list. Yeah. So, I, you know, I have this whole thing, this is why, and, and I'm, I, totally own that I love to plan and I love my to-do list. And, you know, some people think, oh, that's so awesome. That's such a benefit. I'm like, oh, I'm not sure. Because it, it, if, if you're not really on top of it, it can rule you and ruin you. But I really feel like practicing Sabbath, it helps me. Is it would it redeem be the right word? It changes my to do list because there are things on my list that really don't need to be there, right. and I really want them to be there because I really think it's important, and it's really not important. And God is asking me, "Yeah, no, you don't need to do that. You don't need to mess with that. You don't need you to worry do, about you it. You don't need to do that." And He's asking me to trust Him by marking some things off my list. And I think that's that's been really powerful for me because I think through practicing Sabbath, there are things that I just don't do. Yeah. Because you know what? I don't have time for that. Well, and when you stop to be still, in many ways, we do what's more important. Mm-hmm. We're spending time, hopefully, with God in those right, moments. Right. Thinking about things that are true and right and noble and excellent and praiseworthy. Uh, you're contemplating who God is, mm-hmm. uh, you're thinking about heaven, you're thinking about eternal things, and you know, so often we are worried about the urgent. I know. Uh, we're stuck in this um, you know, tyrannical rush, mm-hmm. uh, and as a result, doesn't help our physical well-being, our right. mental well-being, emotional well-being, or spiritual well-being. And when we take time to be still, and think about those things, and to step away from it for a little bit, we actually uh, can become healthier oh, in, in yeah. those areas that can so easily be neglected. Because, as you say, the culture we live in, it's a badge of honor to, oh, I'm so busy. Yeah. I got so much to do. Uh, I, you know, had to get up early. Had to stay up late. Uh, and you know, our recommendation would be that God is trying to say to us, just be still. Yeah. You know, let your badge of honor be. You spent time with me and, quote, didn't get anything done on your to-do list or didn't get a few things done on your to-do list because yeah. you're probably going to do something, right. and it does help you hone in on the important things. It really, really does. So. And I think it's a combination, you know, in terms of Scripture. It's Psalm 46.10 and it's Philippians 4. You know, 
And it's Hebrews 10, I think it is, take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. And it's Philippians 4, think on these things. Because so often our brain doesn't have any free space. We're plugging into a podcast, we're listening to music, we're watching a YouTube video, and we've got all this stuff coming in, in to us. And even if, even if that's all good, even if it's all positive, you know, oh, it's just all sermons, okay, the hush is a thing. The silence is powerful to just turn it off and not have it all coming in and just, okay, God, speak. What? What are you trying to say? And I think, I, I think, because I know this is true for me, and so I'm going to be, I'm going to propose that the be still, so often we avoid being still because we don't want to do what's right in front of us to do. What's the most important thing? We have a to-do list, and we might have the most important thing listed down there somewhere, but we are doing everything around it. We are not doing the most important thing. It might be Bible study. It might be calling a friend. It might be, it could be a a thousand things that God is trying to get you. This is what I want you to do. Right. And we intuitively know that if we get still, (laughs) certainly if we get quiet, that's what he's going to highlight. And so we're just throwing up enough dust that we can just avoid it. And so it's a it's a dare, right? For us not just to train our children in the times that they really need to be still, but to train ourselves yeah. to take time to be still and just contemplate the goodness and the faithfulness right. of God right. in those times. All right, folks. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. This has been Let's Talk Homeschool, brought to you by Apology Educational Ministries, and we are your hosts, Davis and Rachel Carmen. Have a great day, and until next time, we are walking by faith and enjoying the homeschooling adventure of a lifetime.